to offer some insight, we call on our good friend, the professor of law at the Harvard Law School, the Newsmax blogger, and the featured attorney on you and the law here on Newsmax TV, Alan Dershowitz. Alan, we welcome you back to America's Forum. Well, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure for me to be on your wonderful show. Alan, we take a look at the situation now, and there is always what is happening on the outside, but the Wall Street Journal with some of this uh, inside the administration intrigue. What do you make of that story involving uh, the Pentagon and munitions to Israel and uh, the reaction of the White House and the State Department? Well, it's a very important story because uh, up until now, the Obama administration could credibly say that although they disagree with Israel's policies on the settlement, they have stood 100 percent behind their right to defend themselves from rockets and from tunnels. And they have claimed that there has been no closer relationship ever between Israel and the United States militarily and strategically than there is under the Obama administration. And up to now, that seems to be a credible point. But if, in fact, the United States withheld smart bombs from Israel during a time that it desperately needed them to try to prevent the tunnels from operating with death squads coming and killing innocent civilians and rockets being aimed at cities and Israel's airport. If the United States, in fact, withheld smart bombs at that point in time, that marks a very, very strong retreat by the Obama administration from its commitment to Israel's security. So I hope the story isn't true. I hope there is another explanation for it. But if it is true, there's a lot of explaining that the administration has to do. Presidential Counselor Valerie Jarrett has been quoted uh, basically criticizing Israel about uh, the, the launch of, uh, of fire into Gaza, the, the bombing, the air attacks, what has transpired with uh, the comments of Ms. Jarrett with the situation now in the Pentagon, uh, are relations between the U.S. and Israel at their lowest point in recent memory? Well, I haven't uh, heard the statements by Valerie Jarrett. I know her. She's a friend of mine. We, we talk from time to time. She's, I think, on Martha's Vineyard right now. Uh, so I would be surprised if she said anything that was critical of Israel's right to self-defense. I think what the administration has said, and I think they've been wrong when they said it, is that Israel could do more. Well, what more could they do? They try in every possible way to avoid civilian casualties. Every Palestinian civilian who dies is a black mark for Israel and a, uh, a benefit to Hamas. And so, of course, Israel is doing everything in its power. And to second guess an allied military during a crisis and during the fog of war is it seems to me to be sitting in a plush comfortable seat in washington dc and not know what it means to have rockets raining down on your c civilians and and, tu and tunnels being dug with exits right next to kindergartens so what would america do what has america done uh... if you look at the number of civilian deaths caused by the united states in uh... the former yugoslavia in afghanistan and iraq it exceeds by a multiple uh, the number of deaths caused by uh, Israel and, of course, the United States during the Second World War used civilian targets to end the war, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Dresden, uh, Tokyo. Uh, so, you know, it comes with ill grace from the United States to lecture Israel about its need to defend itself from these uh, tunnels and these rockets. You know, the United States-Israeli relationship has been rocky for many years. It was rocky during the Reagan administration, even though Reagan was very pro-Israel. It was rocky during the Bush administration. Uh, during the Bush administration, they insisted that there be elections uh, in, in the Palestinian Authority, and Hamas won the elections. Israel didn't want those elections. So there have been rocky times, but if you read, for example, what Hillary Clinton has said about Israel, uh, she has defended Israel completely and said that Israel is doing the right thing and doing it in the right way. So although, you know, there may be some tweaks, I think uh, the United States-Israel relationship is solid. And it's solid for one important reason. Americans support Israel. Americans overwhelmingly hate uh, Hamas. Hamas, uh, you know, let, let me just read you from a, a statement recently made by the uh, leader, one of the leaders of Hamas, he says, have no mercy on Jews. Fight them wherever you are, wherever you meet them. Kill them and those Americans who are like them and those who stand by them. This is one of the leaders of Hamas calling for the killing of Americans and for the killing of Jews. 
Uh, so, you know, I think America has to stand four square behind Israel and four square against Hamas. Well, we have the situation now where the ceasefire continues to hold, apparently as a prelude to uh, more negotiations. Uh, what is your take on this ceasefire? Will well, it yield it an will agreement? Hold. I hope it will become permanent. Uh, according to reports in this morning's news, it's the head of Hamas who's living as a multi-billionaire in Doha uh, in luxury uh, who is calling for Hamas not to agree to a long-term ceasefire and he apparently has been the barrier to making it into a long-term ceasefire. Look, Israel agreed to seven ceasefires during the recent conflict. Hamas not only disagreed with seven of them, agreed to one, and then during that one killed three Israeli soldiers and tried to kidnap one of them. So, you know, ceasefire to Hamas means Israel ceases and Hamas fires. So, uh, you know, I'm not optimistic about the prospects for a ceasefire. For this reason, Hamas wins the public relations war every time this happens because they fire rockets from behind civilian areas. They big tu build tunnels in civilian areas. Israel has to respond. Hamas knows that Israel will have to kill some civilians. They wait to gleefully show the pictures of the dead babies and dead children on television. The media shows them. Hamas wins, and they're going to do it again and again and again. Unless the world begins to condemn Hamas for its use of human shields, for its use of this dead baby strategy, it's going to be repeated because it works. Israel wins militarily. Hamas wins in the court of public opinion. Israel is brought in front of international tribunals. They have kangaroo courts in which Israel is convicted, and Hamas will do it again and again and again. So it's the international community and the media that gives Hamas an incentive to continue to break the ceasefires. Alan, let me switch topics and bring it back within our own borders, uh, specifically to Ferguson, Missouri. Oh, yeah. Over the past few nights, we have seen uh, violence. In fact, it seems to be, in my mind's eye, a replay of what we saw, uh, what we saw in terms of the, the riots in Watts and other places. I don't want to overstate it, but there is uh, a racial component, racial animus at work there. The difference I see now uh, are police officers clad as if they are military men uh, dealing with SWAT teams and all of that. Uh, does that type of protective gear for the police and that style of policing, can that prompt a more hostile reaction from demonstrators? What's your take on the situation there in Ferguson? Well, first of all, I think people who compare this to the uh, Zimmerman case are just totally off base. Zimmerman looked like a very close case. There were two individuals, no police, and there was a fight, and you know the jury resolved it by saying there was a reasonable doubt. This, based on the evidence we've seen so far, and the police haven't really come forward with their account, seems like a cold-blooded murder, uh, a complete violation of the rules and of the Supreme Court decisions. Police are not allowed to fire at a fleeing felon, a fleeing person, even if he's a felon, unless he poses an immediate danger, unless he has a gun, unless he's firing back. When a person is running away, the police have no right to shoot at him. That is murder, not police conduct. Now, um, he, he says he was reaching for the gun. Even if that was true, he didn't get the gun, and he was running away. So you can't shoot somebody in the back or in the front as he's running away with his hands up. You can't even shoot a soldier if he has his hands up in the middle of a war. So, you know, this seems like a very difficult case for the police department, unless there's more we don't know, and we always have to presume everybody innocent. As far as the militarization of the police, that's a growing phenomenon. It started in Los Angeles under Police Chief Gates uh, several decades ago, and they regarded uh, particularly black areas as, quote, occupied territory, and sent in the police as if they were an occupying force. And that's not good. Community policing is far better. It's far better to have people who are from the community being part of policing the community, not to be seen as an occupation army. And uh, I, I, I'm very disturbed at the way this is being handled. Um, but uh, we have to wait for the facts to come out. But I think right now the goal is to avoid further conflict. An evening curfew uh, might be a good idea. Uh, there are other ideas that are out there to at least stem the immediate violence right now. And on that note, we will have to part company. As always, Alan Dershowitz, we thank you for your insight and analysis, and we look forward to our next visit. Thank you so much. So we heard from Professor Dershowitz. What's your take on Israel or your take on Ferguson, Missouri? Why don't you tweet us your thoughts at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum.